Tiny Tina's Wonderlands just got a massive update, which brings a huge change to loot look that I think a lot of you are going to be happy with. But that's far from the only thing, like we also have an increased chaos level cap, which comes with a new tier of loot as well, and way more. And let's not forget the first piece of season pass content, Coiled Captors, also just released, and I have some mixed feelings about that one. So we'll be discussing all of that, a like on the video would really help the channel out, and let's go! So if you own the Season Pass or if you bought the DLC separately, you can immediately access the Coiled Captors content by going to the Dreamville Overlook, which is a new area located on the overworld map in between Brighthoof and the Snoring Valley, so pretty close to where you start the game. When entering this area for the first time, you are introduced to Vesper and her Wheel of Fate, which is where you can spend your Lost Souls, a new currency for some extra loot. Right across from the Wheel of Fate, you find the real attraction though, the Mirror of Mystery. After activating the mirror and watching a short cutscene, you will be dropped in the first encounter of the Coiled Captors DLC. The setup here is pretty similar to a Chaos Chamber, where you complete objectives in an arena and then a portal opens up to take you to the next one. These arenas are a lot bigger than the Chaos Chamber encounters though, and the objectives are a lot more varied as well. A lot of them in this DLC in specific revolve around these pillars, where you need to rotate individual parts to solve puzzles. You will also come across a lot of enemies here, so even if you are solving a puzzle, there's still a lot of shooting to be done. And then after clearing all encounters, you will eventually reach the boss of this first DLC, Chumps the Old Gold. So far, he doesn't pose that much of a threat. I was able to pretty easily take him down at Chaos level 20, plus he spawns a lot of adds, so if you do go down, it's easy to get a kill to revive yourself. The interesting part about Chumps is that he will power up over the coming weeks. So if you play the DLC now, you fight his first form, but if you come back next week, he will have powered up to his second form until finally reaching his final form on May the 12th. Don't worry though, you'll still need to defeat all previous forms in order to reach the final one, so if you jump into the DLC a bit later, you will still start off with Chumps' first form. After defeating Chumps for the first time, you also get a message telling you that the monsters and marvels you face today are added to the Chaos Chamber, so you'll now see those locations pop up during randomized runs, and I think Chumps can show up as a boss as well, though I haven't seen him yet. You will also have earned Lost Souls, both from enemies during the run and from the boss, which you can spend at the Wheel of Fate for more loot. Then you can jump back in to do it again, gather more souls and spin the wheel for more gear. And I have to say, knowing that the other DLCs will likely follow a similar structure, I'm a bit worried. My first run to the Coiled Captors DLC took less than 20 minutes, and while the main attraction is of course all the new gear to farm, I feel like the rest of the DLC is just a Chaos Chamber run with a single theme and a bit more mechanics. I am very curious how they're gonna spice up Jones with his future forms, plus we of course know that we're also getting a new character class with the final DLC drop, so there's still a lot that can impress, but for the moment I can't help but feel a bit disappointed. I also still need to try out the new loot, and while recording for this video I actually found out that the loot from the DLC is also added to the Chaos Chamber loot pool, as I was able to find the new Tidebreaker spell there. So actually it seems that the best way to farm for these new items is in the current featured run, but more on that in a moment. Because unlike the DLC, the new update sure did not disappoint and brought some huge changes to the game, so let's go over those as well. And the first huge change in the update is to Lucky Dice. Normally these dice you you collect in the world would add to the loot luck of your current character, which means that if you start a new one, you'd have to find all 260 of them again if you want to max out on your loot luck. Well, not anymore, as with this update, lucky dice are now tracked per profile instead of per character which means that the loot luck increase you get from collecting these works on any character. As you can see here, my character has a loot luck multiplier of 1.32 thanks to the dice after collecting 41 of them, and when I make a new character and go to my stats, we see that without doing anything, the same modifier is already in effect. Which is a gold cent. Like, it sounds like a small change, but I cannot stress enough how good of a change this is. Now, I feel like I might actually collect all of them without having to worry about doing it over. And you will definitely need that extra luck when farming for the new tier of weapons, Primordial, that also got added with this new update. Like with Chaotic and Volatile before it, Primordial versions of weapons have higher stats but only have a chance to drop at higher Chaos levels. Wildcat Dave over on Reddit already had the Thunder Anima drop in a Primordial variant and comparing the damage from that one to my regular version, we can see it jumps from 187 to 320. So a stat increase of almost 75%, which you are definitely going 
going to need on the increased max chaos level. Because yeah, the cap has also been raised from 20 up to 35 now, which means that there are 15 more levels for you to grind in the chaos chamber. You of course raise your cap by selecting the chaos trial in the chaos chamber, which has you play through a regular run on your current max chaos level. After completing it, you are able to go one chaos level higher. And each chaos level of course changes things like enemy health and damage, and thanks to Dauntless on Reddit, we already know the new modifiers for the max level. So currently at chaos 20, enemies have their health increased by 541%. But if you farm up to 35 with the new update, they will receive an increase of 1067%, so almost double of what they had on rank 20. Also, you really couldn't add 2% more on top of this gearbox? Shame. We also see that the drop chance for primordial gear on level 35 is 1.16%, so very low. Also good to note is that the drop chances for volatile gear are significantly increased on these higher tiers. So at chaos level 35, they're all the way up to 17.44%, which is pretty high. But the good stuff doesn't stop there. A smaller change that was added that I know a lot of people were asking for was the ability to change the name of your pets, which you can do now by going to a quick change station. So instead of a wyvern companion and a mushroom companion, I now have Wynal and Shroom Guy in my party. Small change, but very much appreciated. Another bigger change that was made is in regards to moon orbs. You of course use this currency at an enchantment machine to re-roll the enchantment of your weapons, but because this became progressively more expensive and you could only carry 4,000 of these, people started running into problems. With this new update, a lot has changed, starting with the fact that you can now carry 16,000 of these. No SDU needed, this change is effective immediately for all characters. You will also be gathering moon orbs a lot faster, as single moon orb drops are now worth 20 instead of 10, and moon orb stacks are worth 80 instead of 40. So that's double from what they were for both of those. Another great change is the fact that no matter how many times you re-roll an enchantment, the cost to re-roll will stop increasing after 4,000 moon orbs. And finally, the final chest in a Chaos Chamber run will always drop 14 Moon Orb stacks, which means that every run you get more than a thousand of them. And speaking of the Chaos Chamber, a new week also means a new featured run, and for the first time it is also an extended run. And I'm pretty sure it's even longer than the random extended runs, as you not only get two Obelisk encounters, you also get two bosses this week, Vorkanar and Dryl, and of course a lot of extra regular encounters thrown in between as well. So considering the fact that you get to collect a lot more crit Crystals, which means a lot more loot from the bunnies at the end. And if you complete the new DLC, new loot can drop there as well. I think this is currently the best way to farm for loot. Next to that, we also have a new weekly event, Cosmetic Collectors, which increases the drop chance for cosmetic items from bosses. Not super exciting, but thanks to last week's changes, you are at least able to easily identify these loot drops and they give you more money than before as well. We'll leave a link to a community doc with all the drop locations for cosmetic items in the video description. And that's just the biggest changes. There's a huge list of bug fixes and solved issues as well. We'll leave a link to the patch notes in the video description as well so you can check them out for yourself. Of course, remember to leave a like if you liked the video and subscribe as well so you won't miss the next one. And if you want, you can watch our previous video on the last hotfix that came with a lot of weapon balance changes. I'll see you in the next one and goodbye.